Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 71760, Jay's Thunder Dragon Evo from the LEGO Ninjago theme. This set contains 140 pieces, too many figures, and retails for $19.99 in the US. So as you just heard, Jay's Thunder Dragon is a Ninjago Evo set, meaning it has like an upgradable or like evolution aspect to it. What that means is the first bag of the set comes with this build, which is not the complete dragon build, but it is still a complete dragon in its own sense. But then when you open the second bag, it gives you more parts and more pieces to expand upon this dragon and make him more complex. In my other Evo reviews thus far, I've shown you the upgraded versions first, but in this one I want to show the unupgraded version first. Because unlike those other reviews, I think the unupgraded version is actually really good looking, and I might even say I like it better than the upgraded version. But like this, the dragon feels kind of complete. Like, don't get me wrong, he's definitely very simple, especially in the body. You can see it's just bricks stacked on top of each other, there's no, like, stuff put on the sides. But I don't know, I feel like the body shape works really well here. The head of the dragon, of course, is very, very cool. It uses the same, like, dragon head building system that the Jungle Dragon and the Overlord Dragon and Wojira and the Water Dragon have used in the past. So it's cool to get new headpieces in that system. This top head part is also completely new with the trans yellow lightning on it. I think that is a really, really cool part. I love how that looks. And the bottom, like, yellow spike jaw piece is really useful too. I feel like you can make some pretty cool customs using that. I don't love the way this set chooses to connect the top and bottom parts of the head. I feel like there's more natural looking ways to do that, and that just doesn't look great. But it does provide the ability to hinge the mouth open. And there you can see into the mouth and the entire connection system a little bit better. The head itself is also on a hinge that can be moved down or up. And you can rotate the head side to side ever so slightly. The body, as I mentioned, is very simple. It's just bricks stacked on top of bricks. No, like, complex building techniques here. Some fun colors, though. This blue is not used often for Jay. It's usually used for Zane. However, combined with the yellow and the dark blue, it still fits Jay pretty well. And because this is a dragon and not, like, a Jay outfit, I don't mind it being, like, a typical Zane color. Because it still works for, like, a lightning dragon. Around the back, the tail's very simple. It's just on a few ball joints. You have some lightning coming out the back. And then the legs are pretty simple. They use the new SCCBS joints. This is in the same blue color that's used on Zane's mech. And there's like a little bit of gold armor plating right here. They use this curved piece right here to cover up the ball joint a little bit, which I do appreciate. And all the actual feet on this guy are identical to each other. As with most LEGO dragons, the range of motion and posability of this guy is actually pretty good because he does have four legs. It's not too hard to balance him. So you can get him in a walking position like this. I would show you a flying position, but he doesn't have wings, so I'll show you that when we upgrade him. And if you want to get really crazy with it, you can also have him stand like a person, which is very, very strange looking, but I love that that's an option. It's just so funny. Why does he look like that? There you go, guys. You can post that on the Bricks by Mind subreddit. But I think that's about all I have to show you for this guy in his base form, so now let me show you his upgraded or Evo form. So to upgrade him first, you have to take apart the front and back parts of his body and insert this little build in the middle. Same thing with the tail, you have to take the tail off, put on this bigger tail piece, and reattach the original tail to the back of that. Attach a saddle to the dragon's back with one of the teamwork banners on it. And in these little technicals, attach two of these dragon wings. And there he is, completely upgraded, and I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I do think he looks better non-upgraded. I think the middle part of the body doesn't look great, it's just a little bit too thin, so as a whole just makes the build feel a little less complete. The extra joint of the tail also just feels a little bit unnecessary. The saddle's cool, I don't mind having that there. And the wings, while they're cool looking pieces, are in just such a weird spot that like, I don't know what to do with them. Like, how do I imagine flying? It's so hard to get him in a proper flying position. Like, this is one of the easiest ones to do, but then he doesn't really look like a dragon, he looks more like a flying squirrel. Which I guess is unique? But yeah, I, I don't know about that one. This is probably the best way to do it with his arms back and his wings out. However, even this, I don't know, something seems off about it to me. I don't like how the legs tuck back behind him. It just feels unnatural to me with the placement of the wings. because they designed this guy like a four-legged dragon, but they put the wings on the arms like he was a wyvern, so it just comes off as a little bit awkward to me. Here's also a look at that saddle on the dragon's back, as well as the teamwork banner in the set. It's got a picture of the dragon on it, which makes sense, and it's a pretty cool one to get. I'm a big fan of the teamwork banner as parts. They're all printed, which is very, very cool to see, and I feel like this is a pretty useful print to have. Here's how Jay actually looks riding the dragon, too. No reins or anything for him to hold on to, which is a little bit strange. But I think it looks fine for what it is. It is only a $20 set, so I guess it makes sense. Even in his upgraded form, though, this guy still has decent balance and a nice range of motion. And there's a few different cool things you can do with him. I like this guy for what he is, but he definitely feels very simple. He would have definitely benefited from a slightly higher price, slightly higher budget. But he's a very goofy set overall, right? He's meant to be very simple and easy for kids to build, and I have to say, compared to, like, the 4-plus Fire Dragon that came out in 2020, this is so much better. I would take this any day. But compared to other dragons, yeah, he's not great. Very silly and very fun, and definitely has room for, like, a lot of customizability. But if you're looking for a good looking dragon, this is not the one to get. And I'm surprised to say it, but I do prefer the smaller form. Because the wings just feel janky, and the addition of the middle and tail sections just feel unnecessary. Especially the middle section of the body, it just feels way too thin, I don't like how that's added. 
but the base form surprisingly just feels a lot more complete as a build, so I like that one. So genuinely, I think if you got this set, I'd recommend you only build the first bag, which is really funny to say, but it's true. This is the first Evo set I felt that way about, and we'll see if I feel that way about any of the other ones. Oh, and of course, the evolved form can stand like a human too, and it is even more disturbing. But I think that's about all I have to say for this guy, so now let me move to the minifigures. So here are the two minifigures in the set. We have Core J and we have a Mango Whipper, also known as a Viper Flyer. Core J is a really interesting, really unique suit, but I have to say I like it a lot. The light yellow on him is so different from anything he's ever had before, but it looks fantastic, especially like on the arm and everything too. And then he comes with a matching light yellow katana, which is an all new piece for this wave. All of them just come with katanas to like match the colors of their suits. And light yellow is one of the coolest ones. I absolutely love that piece. But like, yeah, look how fantastic that hood piece looks in the back. I really, really love that. His other accessory in the set is Nunchucks. It's cool to see Joe Nunchucks again because I feel like he hasn't gotten them in a very long time outside of like Legacy. It's a symbol build for them, just lightsaber hilts with chains on them, but it's effective and they look good. With those removed though, you can see his torso print a little bit better. I like the lightning effects on the sides and the transition from the blue into the sand blue and the legs is surprisingly well done. He's got the letter J written in the Ninjaka language on his torso because that's the first letter of his name. Yeah, overall I quite like this one, it's one of my more favorite suits of this wave. There he is with mask and armor removed, and there's his back torso print which says the word ninja written in the Ninjago language, as well as his alternate face. I like how those lightning effects continue on the back of his torso too. Yeah, the light yellow looks so, so good. I'm a really big fan of that. And then the Mango Whipper is a flying Mango Whipper in the set. He has like this wing attachment on his back. He uses like the Marvel Super Heroes Outrider back attachment, but it's got these wings attached to the back of it. And that's a simple building technique, but I have to say it's pretty effective and it looks really good. It's just got these teeth pieces jutting out. And of course you can move them in, you can move them out. You can put them even all the way back if you want. So if you want, he can just have a giant spike coming out of his back for whatever reason. <laughs> but no, I think that's a fun inclusion. It provides like a nice way for the dragon to be able to fight the snakes without the snakes actually having a flying vehicle. And it's a fun bit of variation for the snakes, because even though this is the same Mangle Whipper minifigure that comes in other sets, he doesn't have this back attachment in every set. So it's pretty cool to get here. With that removed though, it's pretty much the same normal Mangle Whipper I've talked about before. I've talked about him in pretty much every other review I've done up to this point, so it's hard not to be redundant. But in short, I love the recolored Power Whipper head. The orange with the Gunmetal Gray beneath it looks super, super cool. Torso looks great as well, Gunmetal Gray with orange printing on it. I like how some of the orange turns the tail to give it like a very coppery look. And then in the legs, you and then in the legs you have like a bronze belt, more of that like copper aesthetic, and it all ties together really well. These guys are just fun army buildable villains. Very cute, very funny, very fun. Not really any complaints with them. There's a look at the back torso print, you can see it's got like the scale design, there's like backpack straps. I guess you could imagine those are like holding up the flyer on his back. And here is the very top of his torso print, which was covered by his neck. Also, I keep forgetting to mention this in my reviews, and then I notice it in editing, and then I have to make a quick clip while I'm editing just to add this into the review. But this set also comes with the headband hairpiece for Jay. These were originally introduced for the Island sets, and they're not that uncommon, but they're definitely more common than they've ever been in these Evo sets. And they're nice to get. I'm never going to complain about getting a hairpiece for the Ninja, and it's nice to have an alternate option if you don't want to display them with their masks. So, what are my overall thoughts on this set? It's silly. It's very, very silly. Very goofy. I do like it for what it is, it reminds me a lot of the LEGO sets I grew up playing with, a lot of LEGO sets that were like not very focused on detail and mostly focused on play features, and they designed this specifically to be easy to build and fun to play with, and for that I will say it is very good. But it is definitely lacking in the looks department, it is far from a pretty looking set. But there is potential here to turn it into one, and I do appreciate that. The headpieces are fantastic, you could very easily make an incredible looking dragon using those. And I think with some improvement, the rest of it could look pretty good as well. So would I recommend it? You don't need it, but I think it's a fine one to pick up. It's only $20, so it's not like a huge deal to get it. It's obviously one of the smaller sets of this wave. So if you're like a super big J fan and you don't have a ton of money, this is a fine way to get him. But if you're looking for good looking LEGO sets, I'd recommend one of the bigger ones first. If you want a dragon, get the giant Lloyd dragon. If you want a J set, get the J and Neos race car. But if you want a cheap, fun, goofy set, then yeah, this is a great one to get. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please just like, subscribe if you're new. I do LEGO and Ninjago videos like this almost every day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.